Hi folks, HR Funk here, back again with the newest addition to my firearms collection. This is my brand new CZ-75B Omega Convertible. I've owned this pistol right now for just shy of 24 hours and I have not even fired it yet. So when I go out to the range later on in this video and start to shoot it, it's going to be the first time I've fired it ever. First time I've ever fired a CZ-75B of any variety and the first time that uh, I've fired a CZ. I don't believe I've ever fired a CZ before. Now some of you may recall, back a few weeks ago I mentioned in one of my videos that I was looking at getting a CZ P10C that I was going to review. And I was planning on doing that, but what happened was, and the story as to how this firearm became mine, involves my search for the P10C. In, in fact, I did find a couple of P10Cs. And I looked at them, and what happened was, I, I looked at two different versions of the P10C. And what I noticed is, each time I looked at them, I just wasn't that excited about them. <laughs> I'm, I'm not criticizing them, there's nothing wrong with them, but really they were just another polymer frame, striker fire, semi-auto 9mm pistol, kind of like every other polymer frame, striker fire, 9mm pistol out on the market. And they just were not really exciting me. But in the case, next to one of them, was the 75 Omega Convertible. And when I handed the 210 back to the gentleman behind the counter, I asked him if I could look at the CZ-75. And he handed it to me, and what I noticed when I grasped this firearm is the grip feels like it was made for my hand. It is absolutely amazing how well this particular grip frame fits my hand. And that was the first thing that caught my attention. This particular model has rubber. I believe these grips are made by Hogue. And there is the grip profile that you can see right there, and also the contour that you can see in the circumference. And you can see how this comes in and out and in. It reminds me of the old Coke bottle Smith & Wesson revolver grips that everyone likes so well. And it just is amazing how well that fits. Consequently, the pistol points extremely well for me. So when I looked at the pistol, I started to look at it and I started to think about it. I actually passed on it the first time that I looked at it. And then I went back again yesterday and <laughs> looked at it again. And there are so many things about this pistol that I really like. And I'm going to go over the characteristics individually. But before I do that, I want to say that according to CZ, this is the second most copied firearm in the world. Second only to the 1911. They also claim that it's in use by many, many military and police organizations around the world, which I don't doubt. But the first claim about it being the most copied firearm in the world I think is interesting because this design itself copies many, many features from previous firearms. For example, the locking mechanism and the double stack high capacity magazine are both descendants of the Browning High Power. The double action and successive single action trigger mechanism are borrowed from Walther. They pioneered that in their pistols back about a century ago, truthfully. The decocker on this particular variation is very reminiscent of the Sig Sauer pistols. And even the reverse contour trigger guard bears a strong resemblance to the Beretta pistols. So the CZ-75 borrows a lot of design features from a lot of other pistols, but as they blend together into the CZ-75, it really comes together as a pistol that has its own personality. And that's one of the things, along with the way it fits my hand, <laughs> that drew me to it. The third component that really made this pistol irresistible to me is the history of the CZ-75. CZ, for anyone who doesn't already know, stands for Cheska Zubrajavka, which is a company in the Czech Republic that has existed for many years. In fact, it existed back when the current Czech Republic used to be Czechoslovakia, when it was an Eastern Bloc country under communist rule. When the Iron Curtain fell, Czechoslovakia became the Czech Republic, and CZ has continued to exist even in the post-communist era. This pistol, in its original variant, the CZ-75, was originally manufactured in 1975. That's where the 75 part of its nomenclature comes from. 
and it has been in continual production ever since then. Currently, it has many different variations of the original CZ-75 pistol. This one, as I mentioned a little while ago, is the CZ-75B Omega Convertible. Now, what that means is it has the Omega Trigger System, which is a more modern, simplified version of the original CZ-75 lock work that came when the pistol was first manufactured. I also, as I understand it, it is a less expensive version of the trigger system, so it keeps the price down of the pistol a little bit more. And uh, I've got to say, having just bought this yesterday, it was a very reasonable price. This was $529 in the case. And for an all-steel, double-stack, 9mm pistol, I don't think that's a bad price. I think that was pretty reasonable. And at least to some degree, that Omega trigger system helps keep that price down. The last part of the nomenclature, i.e. the convertible part, refers to the fact that the decocker that's on here currently, and if I cock the hammer, you can see that safely drops it, the decocker can be replaced with a safety mechanism that allows this pistol to be carried cocked and locked. In fact, the safety is in the box back here, and the decocker can be removed, the safety can be installed, and the pistol can then be carried in a cocked and locked fashion. This is noteworthy for one very big reason. Any of you who remember back in the old days, Colonel Jeff Cooper was considered the handgun, the fighting handgun guru. He favored the CZ-75 pistol above pretty much any other. And one of the reasons he liked it is because it was one of the few that could be carried in a cocked and locked fashion, even though it was a double action 9mm. Anything that Colonel Jeff Cooper endorses or endorsed back in the day is something that I still pay attention to today. In fact, the Colonel's affinity for this particular design was so great that when he and some others developed the 10mm cartridge in the early 1980s, the very first pistol to chamber that cartridge was really nothing more than a modified CZ-75 design. Again, that's how much Colonel Cooper liked this particular pistol. Now, I tend to prefer it with the decocker it, rather than the safety, but if I ever change my mind on that and I decide I want to carry it cocked and locked, all I have to do is switch out the parts and I can carry it cocked and locked. Now, as a lot of you may know, the way this pistol works as a decocker is when you load the pistol and you cycle around into the chamber, you can safely lower the hammer without discharging the round that's now in the chamber by actuating the decocker system. At that point, you can remove the magazine top it off, reinsert it, and you can place it in a holster. If the pistol is needed, when you draw it, the very first shot is fired double action, which cocks the hammer and then releases it. Since the trigger does two things, that's what makes it a double action. It first cocks the hammer, then it releases the hammer. Two things, double action. Then the slide cycles after that first shot, and the trigger resets, and now each shot after that is single action reason it's single action is because the trigger only does one thing. It simply releases the hammer to strike the primer. As I said, I prefer the decocker mechanism in here, but if I change my mind someday, since it's a convertible, I can convert it. The decocker is ambidextrous. You'll notice that on both sides of the pistol, we have the decocking lever. I'll try to get so the light allows you to see it. We have it here and we have it here. There is not an ambidextrous slide stop that's only on the right-hand side, or actually the left side of the pistol for a right-handed shooter. Another thing you'll notice about this pistol that's a little bit different than the original CZ-75 is the trigger bow is quite a bit straighter. It's not nearly as curved as the original CZ-75. That's part of the Omega trigger system. And truthfully, I don't mind it. I know I've seen and read some people that prefer the more contoured trigger. I don't think much about it. Truthfully, it kind of reminds me of an AR-15 trigger that's a little bit straighter like that. Speaking of the trigger, let's see how it measures on the Lyman trigger pull gauge. First, the double action pull. First pull, 10 pounds, 10 ounces. Double action pull is a little on the heavy side, but it's very smooth. Next pull, 10 pounds, 15 ounces. Let's go with one more. And 10 pounds, 9.7 ounces. 
Now let's try the single action. Three pounds, 6.7 ounces. Nice trigger pull for that single action. Three pounds, 7.5 ounces. <laughs> Two pounds, 8.4 ounces. The single action pull on this pistol is very, very nice. The sights on the CZ-75 pistol are the standard three-dot sights, although these are somewhat different than you find on most pistols. They are not a true night sight, but the white paint on the sights, or on the dots, is actually luminescent. And if light shines on them for a period of time and then you go into a dark area, they glow. So you do get that much at least. It's not a true night sight, but it's better than nothing at all. If you're outside in the daylight, you go into a darkened room and you have to use your sights, you can still see them. I'm not sure how long that lasts. That's one of the things I want to find out with this pistol is once the sights are charged, if you will, how long they will last in a darkened environment. The barrel on the CZ-75 is about four and a half inches long. It is a cold hammer forge barrel, so it should have a long barrel life. The magazine release is very nice, slightly extended, but not so much so that it's obtrusive in any way. There is a very nice grip tang back here to protect your hand, so you don't have to worry about slide bite. One of the more well-known features of the CZ-75 series is the fact that the slide actually runs inside the frame. You'll notice how the slide rail cutout comes in and down around and the frame comes in from the outside. That helps maintain a very low bore axis in your hand and should help very much with recoil control because the lower this bore axis in your hand is, the less noticeable muzzle flip becomes. So that's another very nice feature. Now I've seen some people complain that because the slide rides up so high, excuse me, because the frame rides up so high, that the slide becomes difficult to grasp. I've not really noticed that. I just grab a hold of it and actuate it without any problem. During a reload, obviously, when the slide is extended backwards and you can grab the back of it, pull it and let it go, you don't have to worry about any problem grabbing the slide. So. I think that's one of those things that's a little bit overblown as far as a concern, uh, but I will see when I get out and actually start shooting it if it is something that I notice as being a problem. Last thing I'll talk about is the finish on the CZ-75. According to CZ's literature, this is a polycoat finish. I'm not sure what that means exactly. Uh, it is a very nice looking, fairly matte black finish. Not a lot of sheen to it. My understanding is it's a very durable finish. And we will see as time goes on whether I have to worry about holster wear or any other kind of wear showing up on the pistol. But again, it looks very good. And the CZ-75 comes with a 16 round magazine. Looks like a very good magazine. Magazine is blued by all appearances. And again, when we get out to the range, we'll see how well they function. The CZ-75 weighs just over 35 ounces. Now one of the things that I've come to notice here recently is a lot of people are very, very concerned about the weight of handguns when it exceeds about 28 or 30 ounces. All of a sudden it becomes way too heavy to use, it becomes relegated to something called a range gun. I've still never figured out exactly what a range gun is, but if it's over about 30 ounces, no way would anyone carry it. I think that's a little bit of a misrepresentation of this class of firearm or this class of handgun. If you're talking about concealed carry, especially if you're looking at going inside the waistband or anything that's going to be hanging on a waistband, and if you're wearing something like gym shorts with an elastic waistband, obviously a 35 ounce pistol is going to be too heavy. But as a duty handgun, I've carried firearms everywhere from 40 ounces down to about 20 ounces. And on a good belt with a good holster, I've never really noticed any of them. So to simply relegate something like this to a non-carry status, you know, nightstand 
handgun or whatever, I think is doing it a disservice. The weight of this firearm, I expect when I get out to the range, between the weight and the grip contour and the low bore axis, I suspect that the recoil is going to be very, very manageable with this pistol. And as I've talked about in other videos, that recoil management and that ability to place shots on target quickly and accurately, I think might outweigh, if you'll pardon the pun, <laughs> some of the concern about the heavier pistol. You just need to find a proper way to carry it. So that covers the CZ-75B Omega Convertible. That's a long name, by the way. <laughs> about as well as I can indoors. Now let's head out to the range and see how well it performs. Here we go. And here we are at the range, just that fast. By the way, I have to correct something I said a couple of minutes ago when I said Colonel Cooper, Colonel Jeff Cooper, favored the CZ-75 pistol design over all others. I was referring specifically to double action, single action, 9 millimeters. He was not really a fan of this genre of pistol to begin with, but of all of them, the one that he liked best was the CZ-75. Colonel Cooper, of course, is most known for being probably the world's foremost proponent of the 1911 pistol, so that was his favorite pistol. But if he had to choose a double action, single action, 9 millimeter pistol, it would have been the CZ-75. So. Sorry for the misreference there a little while ago. Hopefully I cleared that up. And now we can get on to shooting the CZ-75 out here at the range. And I'm all set up and ready to go. The first shooting that I do is simply going to be a 30 foot accuracy test. I've got a bullseye target set up down range. I'm gonna be shooting from back here and I just wanna try out the pistol, make sure the sights are on and make sure the accuracy is where I think it ought to be. Now one thing CZ does when you purchase a firearm from them, or at least with the CZ-75B that I purchased, there was a test target in there. It's sort of a, a digital representation, maybe I should say, of a test target to show you what kind of accuracy the pistol demonstrated at the factory. And the factory group that I saw was about inch and a half, two inches, fired at 25 meters. So I'm expecting the accuracy is gonna be very good, but I still wanna try it out for myself. So here we go, let's see how the bullseye target shooting goes with the new CZ-75B. Okay, not bad. Four out of five are in the black. One of them slightly off to the left. Actually, I probably am going to drift that rear sight just slightly to the right. But overall, accuracy is looking very good from 30 feet. And much as I suspected, the recoil impulse with the CZ-75B is very soft. Trigger is very nice. That low bore axis, the grip frame, the weight of the pistol, really helps to cushion that recoil. It's a very soft shooting pistol. Not that any 9mm is something that's going to tear your arm off, but this one in particular is a very soft shooting pistol. Okay folks, that's enough of the bullseye shooting. Now I've got a silhouette target set up at 50 feet. I'm going to do a little bit of shooting from back here. I'm going to pick up the shot tempo some and try to keep the shots center chest from this distance. Now one thing I'm doing differently this time is I'm shooting the first shot double action. The last time on the bullseye target, I fired each shot single action. This time I'm gonna start out with the first shot double action and each shot after that will be single action. So this would be just the way you'd be presenting it from your holster. Oh, by the way, if you hear some noise in the background, there's a train going by. Not much I can do about it. I could yell quiet on the set, but I don't think it would do much good. So I'm gonna go ahead, get ready to go here and we'll shoot out these shots from 50 feet.
Okay, not too bad from 50 feet, about a five or six inch group. Again, I'm gonna have to drift that rear sight to the right a little bit, I think. I'm hitting just a little bit to the left, and I think I just need to do that to compensate. In looking at the sight, it doesn't appear to be to the left at all, but I think if I move it over a little bit, I'm gonna be a whole lot happier with that shot placement. And I'm up to 20 feet now and ready for some failure drills. Two shots to the body, one shot to the head. We'll see how this goes. Each time I start, I'm going to fire the first shot double action, and then the following two shots will be single action. So I'll have to manage that trigger transition as I'm shooting. Let's see how this goes. Not bad. Okay, I can hear you out there. You're saying, okay, HR Funk, all this is well and good, but is the CZ-75B a TAC driver? <laughs> so we're going to find that out right now. I've got the TAC set up on the target down there. We're back at 20 feet. I'm going to see if I can knock that thing out of there from 20 feet. Now, as you can see, I'm hitting a little bit to the left with this pistol, so I'm going to favor the right side of the TAC a little bit, and we'll see if we can whack that thing. By the way, I've got a little bit of a streak going. The last two or three videos I've made, I've zapped the tack with the first shot that I fired. So I'll see if I can keep that streak alive today. Oh, the streak is over. Well, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. <laughs> oh, ever so close. Well, I'm not sure how you grade that one. <laughs> As it turns out, the second shot took the head off the tack, the shot that was so close, and I just couldn't drive the thing out of there. So <laughs> I guess we'll call it a uh, half tack driver. How's that sound for the CZ-75B? Okay, let's see how the 75B does against a soda bottle from 20 yards. Looks like it did pretty well. So that's pretty much my video review of the CZ-75B Omega Convertible Pistol. Again, long name. <laughs> um, it has been running without a hitch. Uh, if you're interested, I'm using 115 grain Blazer brass ammunition. I did not clean this pistol, didn't lube it, didn't do anything to it before I came out here. I just brought it out, loaded it up, and started shooting, and it hasn't missed a beat. The accuracy is very good for a handgun of this sort. The recoil impulse, just as I expected, is very soft. It's a very comfortable pistol, very naturally pointing, and I'm going to have a whole lot of fun shooting this in the years to come. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those below. That's pretty much the video for today. And as always, until next time, good shooting. Bye-bye.